Hey, John from Mighty here. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can embed a certificate of completion directly into your Articulate Rise course using the Mighty Interactive HTML block. This will have all of the code embedded in the interactive zip. We'll provide that in the description. You'll be able to find that in Maestro's community. We call it MC. And in there, in that zip file contains the JavaScript, the CSS, and actually an example certification PDF, which is a form fillable PDF that you'll be able to leverage as your template, or you could even generate your own PDF. So first we're gonna just show off exactly how this works and where you could use it inside of like an LMS. And then I'll show you the form generation process if you wanna create a custom form. And then from there, I'll talk through a little bit of the code in case if you wanna modify it. All right, so as we dive into our RISE course, there's obviously not a lot of information here, but what I wanna show off is this new interactive. So if we go into the Mighty Blocks section and we add this interactive HTML block, I'm going to drop in the zip file that again, you can find in the Maestro community found in the description. And with this zip file, it contains all the logic that you're gonna to need to get a basic version of this certificate of completion. So as you can see here, as soon as I loaded in that zip file, this is what that interactive looks like. You can certainly customize it if it's not your brand style for the um, download certificate button, or if you want a different typeface or what have you. You can certainly modify all sorts of things here. Um, there's also two modes to this. There's one where when we're not in an LMS, we need to collect the person's name. Uh, and then if you're in an LMS, we can actually automatically pull that from the LMS itself which I'll show you here in a little bit with Scorm Cloud. So just as a basic example, I'm gonna go ahead and hit download certificate. And as soon as we open up this certificate, you're gonna see exactly what it looks like. So this is a form fillable PDF. And again, this is just our stock one that we're gonna include inside of this zip. And you're gonna be able to replace this if you'd like, and we'll show instructions on how exactly you can do that with Adobe Acrobat. And with this PDF, it's actually able to fill in three different sections. The first is the learner's name. This section right here is actually reserved for the course name. Just in authoring and preview, you're not gonna be able to do that. But once we actually export it, either published or for your LMS, it'll actually fill in your course name based on how you exported it. And then lastly is just today's date based on you hitting that download certificate button. So this is what the PDF looks like, which is great. Uh, right out of the box, just comes with Rise using this interactive HTML, which comes with Mighty. And again, all of the code that you'll be able to modify it. So let's jump now into exporting this for a SCORM course. And we'll go into SCORM Cloud and load this in there to see what the interaction actually looks like once you're in an LMS. So let's jump back out and go to the publish section. We're gonna publish for LMS, and this actually works for 1.2, 2004, or XAPI, which I'm gonna test this for SCORM 2004. We're gonna publish out our course, and here in a second, we'll jump over to SCORM Cloud. So here we are in SCORM Cloud, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new SCORM package. We're gonna go and grab this from our downloads folder. And then we're going to import this course. Once this course is done being imported, we can hit the launch button. We'll just jump right into the conclusion. And you'll notice now the input is gone. And I'd mentioned that in the code, we're actually going to be able to connect to the SCORM API and then pull the learner's information from the API. So if your LMS supports that, we will grab that. Otherwise, we'll just display an input for them to enter their name. And now all they need to do is just hit the download certificate button, open up that cert, and you'll see here is my name. My name is QA at Maestro. And my course name is custom certification and today's date. So then in this situation, you don't even need to ask the learner's name. It'll automatically get that from your API. So next, let's dive into how you can actually generate a custom PDF and all the different form fields that you're gonna need inside of there and how you can export that PDF to work well inside of your zip. 
All right, so we're gonna open up our PDF file in Adobe Acrobat. And over here on the left, you can click prepare a form. And on the right, once you do that, you can see all of these inputs. You'll see here text one, text two, or text three. If you double click on those text areas, it'll give you this properties in which you can rename it. So again, where you want the person's name, we're gonna name as name. Then the course name section, if you want that displayed on your course, you can use course name. And then this last area here is for your date. So you would just name that as date. Now again, you can really set up any PDF that you want. As long as you've got these inputs, you should be good to go. All right, and then lastly, let's talk about how to export this. So if you go up to file, say compress a PDF, and you're gonna get this prompt about optimizing it. We wanna just retain existing, and then go ahead and just name this whatever you want. Now what this will do is it will actually ensure that all of the cleaned up code in your PDF is ready and able to be used inside of our PDF library that we use under the hood to fill in these forms. So once you've saved that custom certificate, what you're gonna do is go to the zip file, unzip it, and then replace this certificate.pdf with the one that you just generated. So make sure that you rename it certificate.pdf, place that into this folder here. And then to prepare that to go back into your RISE course, you're just gonna select everything inside of here and right click and hit compress. Now, if you're on Windows, you're just gonna need to do a similar thing, highlight all those and then generate a zip file. So you'll compress that. And then this is where you'll wanna upload that into the interactive block inside of Mighty. Now again, make sure that you select all these files because this index.html file needs to exist at the most outer level of your zip. So that's why I just go into the folder, select everything, right click, compress, and then upload this archive.zip. All right, now here's a couple of things that I wanna show you guys in regards to troubleshooting. So let's say you've got this loaded in and it doesn't work. You put in your name, you hit download cert, and just nothing is happening. Well, if you go ahead and right click and inspect, this will pull up the inspect window, which might be on the side or might be floating. By the way, this is our inspect window. And if you go to this console tab, you may see some errors. This is an error in which the PDF that I generated doesn't have the right form field names. So again, when you're generating custom uh, certificates, those PDFs, make sure that you name them appropriately. And again, look back into our MC post and those will have all those names clarified uh, as well as you can inspect it inside of the code. So here is an error that you may see where it's got no form fields with the correct name. All right, and now here's another example of a different error you may get. Again, you click the download certificate, nothing happens. You open up the inspect window and in your console tab, you see an error like this where it says cannot find page for PDF ref and then some numbers. It doesn't really matter what the ref numbers are. What this is referring to is that inside of your PDF, when you added those custom fields to it or those form fillable fields, for some reason there's a disassociation between those fields and then the page. So when it goes to flatten those, it actually can't do that. So when you go to save your certificate output, Make sure you use that compress option because that will ensure that it actually removes all the extra bits that are inside of the PDF itself, which helps kind of clear out this issue. If you do run into other issues with the PDF, make sure you look back at our template and kind of compare that with your version. And again, it's something to do usually with the fillable field, not matching the page itself under the hood, and compressing it seems to work great. Lastly, and my favorite part is walking through the code, just in case if you wanna get in here and modify anything specific to your needs, you can certainly do that and feel comfortable with a little bit of a walkthrough from me. So here's a list of all the content inside of that zip. We've got our certificate.pdf, which we just walked through how to create a custom certificate. Make sure you rename that and just replace this file here. Then we've got our index.html, which is just our HTML code. We've got our main JS file, which has all of our custom JavaScript we wrote specific for this. We've got a style CSS, which is basic, bare bones, just gets us general styling. 
on how that looks. And then lastly, this is actually just the PDF library generator that we're using, which actually goes through and like fills in those form fields on your form fillable PDF. So we'll just leave that there and there's not really much that we'll walk through on that. So first in this index.html file, there's really only two things you should care to update. It's this uh, text here for updating your name. And if you wanna have that say something else, you certainly can. Maybe from a translations perspective, you need to have different text as well as the download certificate button, if you need to swap out the label for that. These are those two areas that you may be most interested in. Obviously, this is just the general HTML, so feel free to modify anything in here. The next section I'm gonna talk about is our styles. Super basic styles, just using a general font family. If you need a custom font, you can certainly add that font file, or if it's remotely loaded from like a Google Fonts, um, hopefully you're comfortable and familiar with how to do all that. And then we're just using just a general flex layout to ensure that it's like all center justified. Some modifications to the input widths as well as to our button itself. So if you ever need to update your color to maybe more match your theme color, you can do that as well here with this background color on the button. So lastly is this main.js file, which in here really initializes all of our logic to get your form value from that input or from your LMS. And then as soon as you click that download certificate button, what actually happens to generate that certificate? So this top section here is just really an initialize function, which ultimately is what gets called at the very end of this file. And then this initialize SCORM logic goes through and actually finds the SCORM API. And because this is iframed technically into your course, it has to go up to parent or parent parents uh, in order for it to be able to find exactly where the SCORM integration exists within your RISE course. So this will handle both 2004 and, uh, and 1.2. This section here will handle XAPI because those are done slightly differently. And then we'll also just have a check to see if it's either using SCORM, SCORM 1.2, 2004, or XAPI. So we've got those variables up here that we'll leverage down below. I'm gonna go ahead and skip over the initialize button just because that's a little bit beefier. We'll just talk about learner as well as fetching that learner. So with the learner field itself, we need to fetch the learner from either the LMS or directly from the input itself. So the way that we'll do it from the LMS is again, just figure out based on the SCORM version that you're on, there is this get student name call, which will go and just get the student's name. However, it's reported to your LMS. And then from an X API perspective, you actually would just get a statement. And then from there, you can get that actor's name is how X API would work. So that's how we get the learner's name. And then from there, we're just gonna go ahead and set the value. And then this is gonna immediately hide or collapse that instructions section. So that's what ultimately leads us was really just that generate button section within our course. And then lastly here is just the get course name. So with Mighty, we actually expose a lot of the course data, maybe getting too in the weeds, but anyways, that's how we're pulling the course title. So if you're curious on that. Now to show the logic with the button, what we're doing here is we are adding a click event to that generate PDF button we're going to get the PDF itself. And again, this is where the name matters. So if you do change the name, you need to just update this name here. We're gonna go ahead and fetch that and read it in using this PDF lib library. We're gonna go and get the form out of that PDF. And then what we're gonna do is ensure that we fill in the name, the course name, and the date. Now remember when you're creating custom form fillable PDFs, Make sure to name those inputs based on the name, course name, or date. That's also noted in the uh, Maestro community post, as well as we'll show that, and we showed that in the earlier part of the video. And once those fields are filled in, we actually then just flatten the PDF out, we save that out as a PDF, and then we name it. So here's another section that maybe you care uh, about the name of it that gets downloaded if you wanted to use something other than certification.pdf you could certainly name it whatever you want 
So super high level overview of the code. Hope you guys appreciated this video. I know a lot of you out in the community have been looking for a way inside of your RISE courses to generate the certifications of completion. And this is the fastest, easiest way to do that. If you guys enjoyed this video, there's gonna be tons more, I'm sure like this over the next couple of months. So make sure you guys like and subscribe so that way you get that automatic notification of the next one. See you then.